and while I'm loading up and I still got a little bit of well that's an interruption <laughs> well, I still got some light left and do a little bit of a Popping something over there. You're just firing off some rounds at a target range, I guess. Who knows? Well, I got some. Before I was interrupted by gunfire, so I'm gonna go over the setup for this year. It's a Hobie PA12. Uh, it's a 2017 model. Nothing, nothing too new. But... Not much difference between the 17 and 18 year models. Eight, I think the 18 year model has has like a gear has like a gear track and then a little couple cutout slots or tools, but not much difference in the hole design. The 2019 hole design has that Guardian system, which is can't know if y'all can see back here. But like on the under the seat, there's this, there's this a uh, scupper hole that's just made for that uh, a transducer cable to go down but it's a different it's like a different drop down thingamajig for that guardian system I don't I haven't really researched researched on it haven't used it so I can't really get a good estimation of what how much of an improvement that is so can't really answer that one but uh, for the center tackle tray I just got the the original uh, two plano box tray because that didn't feel, feel like buying nothing else and I usually keep my terminal tackle box and my crankbait box in here split ring pliers super glue some wacky ring in there usually keep my towel and my little hand towel for I need to dry stuff off I usually and then I keep my keep my hog trough just tucked in right under here I can only put it in uh, uh, I guess where the third, uh, the end, by end where the 30 inches. I can only put that end in because if I try and put the, put this in, I don't know. It, it usually just tends to get caught up under there some more, so I usually just lay that under there. I keep my net right here, and this is just a G2, like the end, the Everlast uh, waiting net. Normally the handle only goes down to like right here. Me, me and my friend Thomas, we put like an inch and a quarter PVC pipe, just just lengthed it out. That we weren't too scientific with it. We just kind of saw where the easy reach was. Took the old uh, foam off the original handle, put this on, popped in, sent some sent some screws into it. Worked fine. It still floats. Uh, electronics. I have a Lorentz Elite T, not Elite Nine Ti. Got it of May of last year. And we'll go ahead and look what's powering that. Is a, a if I remember correct, it's a BioNO 20 amp hour lithium battery. That's just it done there. I didn't buy the bracket or anything, so I just really light lithium super light. Uh, if you go with the uh, standard like lead lead base, they're really really heavy. So um, kayaks already super heavy. I'm already uh truck hopping it so I just went with lithium and didn't since I didn't get a bracket or anything I just had some of this foam stuff lying around for my old sea tug packaging so I just cut out a little slit and wedged it under there so it's not going the way and if I want to get fancy I could put some velcro on top and whatever but it works for me and I just usually just keep most of my soft plastic stuff first aid stuff light a little that little plunger idea I got from Greg Blanchard when you get some water and use my uh, use it, I only use it really use this when I get water inside my little vertical rod holders, which I don't use, but the water will get down into them. And if uh, ever, if it ever gets super duper windy and knocks some water inside the hole, I just use this drain out. I mean, it doesn't doesn't weigh nothing, doesn't really get in the way. Uh, then I have a little bait binder. Use I usually keep a spare digital camera in case my phone goes overboard some line I can usually keep most of my z-man stuff in here just because that uh, the, the material in that plastic and uh, the material on that those soft plates don't really agree too well 
to being exposed to outside to like really hot temps or other plastics they will melt really bad so i usually keep those separate I usually just chunk whatever spare stuff I have at the end of the day in here. Pop it down, good to go. Trash, I usually just smash back here. Not that big a deal for me. Uh, standard milk milk crate. You got four rod holders. A little tray on the side for some tool, for some like pliers and tools and stuff. Standard lunch box. Nothing too fancy there. I can usually keep my little plastic swim baits and like bags of Senkos, sunscreen, bug spray, and then there's uh, JJ's Magic and a thing of Shad spray, and then I keep my, and I keep my little uh, scale with me, just I'll just toss it in there, it's been sitting through the rain and everything, so it's, it hadn't bothered it none. Uh, I keep my standard the I came with the, uh, the, Ho the Hobie issue ones that came with it. I just keep I they've pretty much stayed in this configuration for almost for actually almost like over a year a year and a half now, and I've never had no problem driving down the road with it trapped in. I had to change them up a little bit because when the boondocks came in, because typically I, I ran the handles like all the way back here, but I just had to tuck them back, but. <laughs> Since I got the boondocks, you can only load you can, you can only load it in front end first, so it doesn't hurt nothing. Then so I, I go highway speeds on them all the time. Never had an issue. Uh, just got an old Magellan Outdoors flag. This is my I just bought it a while ago. So it's all torn up. And there's back in here is the little scupper plugs. Never had to take those out. Uh, and the, the boondocks I. If I had to recommend one thing, get these. I was using a sea tug. A sea tug will work if you're doing a lot of like dirt and earth uh, launching. Like for like right here would probably be, you'd probably be okay because it's not that steep to get up. If you you run into a lot of boat ramps and lakes that only have steep concrete ramps, those things are a pain to get on by yourself. Yeah. When I decided to get rid of mine was when I was launching out of Cedar Ridge at Belton. That thing is super duper steep. Every time I try and roll under, get under, that thing with that sea tote, that cart would just roll off on me. And there's boats coming in. Get, you're just, and you're just getting in their way. So, out after that, I decided to just go, go ahead and get that done. But after seeing how, how difficult those installs can be, I don't, I don't have very long arms anyway. So, I didn't feel like messing with it, so I just took it up to Mariner Shells up in Dallas. And they took care of it for me, and it's doing fine so far. No cracks, no problems, works just, just as intended. And that's about it, really. I'm just halfway through the load-up process, but typically I'll throw my, or for my PFD life jacket, I got an NRS Chinook in the large size. Here's that Mirage Drive. And then I usually just, when I take my rod socks and put them on, take them on, put off, I usually just lay them over the top of this. And I'll just pick them up and stack them on when I get done. Uh, that's pretty much it. Not Nothing too fancy. I'm out. I like how, uh, the less stuff I got to worry about, the better. So, and this has been working good for me for a while. And usually with my transducer, my, my transducer and Usually with my cables for my fish finder, I'll just run I'll just run a bungee over these. They're not they're not just flapping in the wind. And if you don't have one of these, yeah, I would very highly recommend them as well. They're called a it's called a tourney tag. All it really is it just helps uh, help secure your if you're doing most almost all of these tournaments just run off of a, a random code or number for the day. And I usually write write this stuff on my hand just in case, but that stuff washes off. But you can always just run, you can just keep it like this. Stay, keep it on the board all times. Do a bunch of tournaments at the same time. And then if you if like, yeah, no matter what size fish you get, you can always just run it up. So you catch a 12 incher, catch a 12 incher, run it up there. If you catch like a 
donkey, like 23, 24, heck, even maybe 25, 26, 27. I don't, I, I don't know how long it's going to be if, until I catch one, if I do. But you can just scoot it around as you need it. Well, I'll probably do a little cutaway here. Now I'll just speed up through this process of loading it. So, we'll see you on the other side. And I can't snap in these gloves. And for when I'm loading these, I usually just load my rods and everything. Just God dang, they're just popping off rounds at this point. <laughs> Jeez. But I'm just... When I put my rods and stuff in here, I just lay them, lay them long ways to truck bed. I can put, I've put 7-Eleven rods in here before, no problem really. So, it works for me, nothing fancy. I didn't really feel like messing with a rod tube or anything like that. Alright, that's pretty much it. I'll keep mine. Uh... NRS Chinook cam strap. I just use I just use one of these to uh, keep that kayak down. I used to keep two and run one. Used to run one through the nose up in front, but after I went, I just tried for one one a couple times. I noticed it didn't like made like absolutely no change. So I decided to just keep using one. And when I'm loading up like this, if you try and load it up by yourself. Just on your standard truck bed, you just have this on there. As soon as you lay it up on there, you just, it's just gonna wanna slide back towards the ground. You gotta just hold on to it for dear life to keep it from there. So I just have two of these lying around. All it is is like EVA foam. So I just go up, lift up, and then that foam keeps it sitting there. I don't have to hold on to it. It just stays there. And I'll just pick it up a little to the side. And then just lift up, push, get under it a little bit. Take the wheels off. That process is also a lot easier than when I had the sea tug. That sea tug, you gotta pick it up really high. A lot of times I'll, I'll just keep a towel down on the floor because I hate to get this truck very dirty so I'll just let that towel, towel collect everything. Mostly use, usually just those wheels that track everything in. And then on the also while we're here I couldn't show you earlier for that uh my transducer I have a that total scan with an Elite 9 Ti but the thing is on a on like 17 18s and anything uh, anything earlier models you you only get a, like a, you only uh, get a flush mount so it just sit flush with the hold ain't gotta worry about it if, if you get like these totals these big uh, side scan total scans it'll sit way below the hull line so you'll drag it and hit everything so this is a burly pro total scan transducer i put this on i mean last last may or so no problems not that too hard, not too hard of an install, so it worked pretty good for me. And and loading this up in the truck also makes it a little bit different too, because since it sits below the whole line, it's going to be the kayak's going to be sitting on top of it. And it's let's get a short bed where this whole end's going to be off. But for that, I just grab my other second piece, get under it, lift it up a little bit. And just rest it down. Now, now at least it's, at least it's a protected a little bit, and the uh, weight's distributed a little bit. Makes it ride a lot smoother once I tie it down too. Yep, and it's center line.
I always just run just I always just run this one thing of straps is I used to run two but never really needed it or it didn't change much when I just used one so I just run run it through run it under the seat through and through through that side and just go back the other way because these with these cam straps you it's not like a typical ratchet where where you can just hook into these run it through and just run it like that since it's all you have to run it through the whole thing again and these work a lot better for well at least down here in Texas during summertime when it gets really really hot plus any kind of plastic base things like the warp if you put a lot of tension on them and ratchet straps you, it can be very easy to way over tension them there's a couple pictures you've probably uh, people have probably shown you or you've seen they got uh, got them loaded on the end of the truck and they got it cranked down really hard really hard really bad summer day and the th things like bent over bent over in half because it's just like melted and they've torqued it so bad but with these little cam straps, you can only tighten it as much as it can like, you can only like, there's only a certain point you can tighten it, tighten it until you can't over tighten them. And then once you get it tight, it's pretty much good to go. So nothing to really worry about there. And I always run back, make sure it's good and tilted, nice and straight. Tighten it one more good go. I'll just wrap it around twice. With these NRS Chinook cam straps, they come with the self covering thing, so you can just like tie up your loose line so you ain't gotta make another knot or nothing like that. And it's good to go. So that's not gonna go anywhere. It's like I've never had no problem running highway speeds with this. five rods and my anchor got my wheels over there and I then I'll usually have my cold weather gear up in front which I've already checked and got in there <sighs> yep man that's basically it about 6 30 about a 30 minute drive back to the house Stop somewhere on the way back. Grab something. Another slow day of fishing, but hopefully it'll start picking up in the next month or so. This spring's been a lot colder. I say spring, it's not even spring yet. But this time of the year has been colder than it was typically, because typically it's been pretty warm this whole month. We had a lot. We had a bunch of cold fronts come through this part of the year. So water temps haven't really had had that good of a chance to climb up yet. Oh, as I say that, there's still places up north where it's still just completely froze over or super duper cold, super duper cold water. All right, catch y'all next time.